Good morning, Hughes. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. Good. <laughs> good, it's good. I hope everybody had an awesome weekend. Um, everybody, I also assume, had someone to reach out to for Veterans Day. And great. Um, again, we're going to have an awesome day at church. Um, starting right now, we're going to have a musical selection by Minister Kevin. And just so we know, who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Nervous. Um, my name is Chris, and I'm going to be your worship leader for this morning. Fantastic. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> certainly, certainly glad to, to have you, Chris. I appreciate you. Right. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer, yes he is, yes he is. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God, every praise, every praise is to our God, God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he 
Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Thank you, Minister Kevin. Another awesome selection, as always. Now for today's prayer. If everyone can close your eyes. <laughs> Dear Father, in your divine presence, we humbly gather, seeking guidance and strength to be good and help one another. Grant us the wisdom to recognize opportunities and to make a difference in the lives of those who are burdened and in need of assistance. May our hearts be open to the cries of the suffering and our hands ready to serve with love and understanding. Help us overcome selfish desires and ego so that we may selflessly contribute to the well-being of our fellow beings below. Grant us the courage to stand for injustice, inequality, and in the compassion to comfort those facing adversity. May our actions speak louder than our words as we strive to become beacons of kindness in a world that sometimes seems blurred. Guide us to be patient and persistent in our endeavors to create a ripple effect of goodness that lasts forever. In moments of doubt, strengthen our resolve and remind, and remind us that through service, our souls evolve. May our deeds reflect the light of your love as we strive to emulate the example set by the divine above. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Next, we're gonna have another music selection by Minister Kevin. Naughty but goody. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. I'm filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this 
this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, praising my Savior all the day long, praising my Savior all the day long. Thanks again, Kevin. And at this moment, I'd like to welcome any guests that may be in the house of worship today or any guests that might be online. Um, please, if anyone is new here, um, feel free to stand up. No, nope. okay, guess it's just us. <laughs> okay, um, if everybody can please stand for our congregational hymn which can be found in the African-American Heritage Hymnal, the yellow colored book. Um, it's hymn number 174, titled, We Have Come Into This House. Him. We have come 
come into his house to gather in his name and worship Christ the Lord. Lord, worship him, Christ the Lord. Amen. And if you can please remain standing, we're going to do the scripture reading, Matthew 25, verse 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten young women, to, ten young women took their lamps and went to meet the, br the bridge room. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridge room was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridge room. Come out to meet him. Then all those young women got up and trimmed their lamps. The, the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for yours, it's not for you and us. You had better go to the, to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridge room came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other young women came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore you know neither the day nor the hour. And that was the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Next, we'll have another music selection by Minister Kevin. And shortly after that, we'll have our sermon by Pastor Paul. Underground, 
looking to my God's right hand. When the stars begin to fall, my Lord, what a morning! My Lord, what a morning! Oh, my Lord, what a morning! When the stars begin to when the stars begin to fall. My God, my God, what a morning. When the stars began to fall It sounds so beautiful and majestic When Minister Kevin sings that song But that's kind of scary, isn't it? When you start thinking about all the stars starting to fall But it's also a beautiful thing, amen Because it represents the consummation of time that When uh, the final battle has been fought And God wins and we are all in his presence forever and ever and ever. Amen? For the time that is ours on today, we're going to look at the subject anticipation and action. Anticipation and action. As we look at the passage of scripture that Chris has already read in your hearing, Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Won't you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. For truly, God, you are our rock and our redeemer, you are our Lord and Savior, you are the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, you are the love of our soul, you are everything, and it's in you whom we trust, Jesus the Christ, amen. Kevin, as a pastor, I have to officiate at both weddings and funerals. Both are emotional events, but weddings tend to be even more emotionally charged than funerals. I think it's because a lot of time, energy, effort, creativity, and oh yes, a lot of money, a whole lot of money is invested in the marriage ceremony in the hope that it will capture the, the love of the couple in a memorable way. Because they are so e emotionally charged, weddings are actually fragile events with lots of potential for a mishap or even a disaster to occur. F for one thing, the, the bride, the groom, and their families are stretched thin and deep feelings easily come to the surface. That there are tears at weddings and profound hope, but sometimes anger, resentment, and frustration also show up. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, either you've never gotten married or you've never been to a wedding. But even in the midst of all of that, things can and often do go wrong you know sometimes when I get together with my clergy colleagues we, we, we share stories of wedding drama for, for example that the best man got lost and ne never made it to the rehearsal our, our, the bridal dress was the wrong size sister Hoover our, 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 the flowers were 
not delivered, or, or the groom forgot the marriage license. <laughs> FYI, and I got this tip early on, but FYI, that's why I always re require the groom to, to bring the marriage license to the rehearsal so that's one less thing to worry about on the wedding day. It, it is significant that near the end of his life, when his earthly ministry was drawing to a close, Jesus chose an emotionally charged event as the context for a parable about the kingdom of God. To understand our text, it helps to know a little about the wedding customs of the day. Weddings in Jesus' day were every bit as much emotionally charged as the weddings are today. And they had the same potential for mishaps. Guests assembled at the home of the bride and were entertained by her parents while waiting for the groom. When the bridegroom approached, the guests, including the bridesmaids, lighted torches and went out to greet him. In a festive procession, the entire wedding party walked to the groom's home where his parents were waiting for them. Then the wedding ceremony would take place and the wedding banquet would follow and last for several days. Amen. That's a lot of dancing and eating to have a, a wedding reception for, for several days. All you Bible readers will recall Jesus, his mother, and his disciples were guests at a wedding in Cana in, in the beginning of his ministry. At, at, at that wedding, Jesus turned water to, to, to wine. Some people said that that was his first miracle. In this parable, for whatever reason, the groom does not show up on time. The hours pass, and many of the people waiting in the wedding party fall asleep. Finally, at midnight, they are awakened with a shout, He's coming. The bridesmaids leap into action. that They trim their lamps and head out to meet him. Five of the ten have used up all of their oil and they have no reserves. Their attempt to borrow some from their wiser, more prudent sisters is rejected. In, in other words, they didn't help a sister out. Frantically, they set out in search of oil, which was no easy task back then at midnight since there were no 24-hour-a-day convenience stores. <laughs> While the five bridesmaids are still searching for all, they, they miss the wedding procession. When, when they finally arrive at the groom's home, they are locked out and they are dismissed. Jesus uses this story to share an important life lesson. He says, keep awake, you do not know the day nor the hour. In other words, this parable is all about anticipation. Staying alert, waiting purposely, being prepared is the message that we should not miss in our text. Jesus told this parable because he knew that early Christians would have to adjust to the reality and yes, the disappointment that he would not return when they expected him to return. And their mission was to wait expectantly and in the meantime to live faithfully, courageously, and hopefully. And that's still our mission today. At the heart of our faith is the certainty that, that human history has a purpose and a goal and that it is moving towards an eventual fulfillment and completion. But to be honest, we, we do not share that message very well. In fact, 
sometimes we avoid the topic of end times in church because of its abuse by popular eschatologists who sell a lot of books describing the end of history in graphic and violent, mostly violent terms, and who focus on the end times to the neglect of this time and this world. The, the point of this parable is, is not to encourage us to be so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. The, the point is we are to live with anticipation, yes, but we're also to live in action. We are to live expectantly and hopefully. Christian hope rests on trust that the God who created the world will continue to love the world with gentle providence. That God will continue the process of creation until the project is complete. And God will continue to redeem and save the world by coming into it with love and with grace. Christian hope is as big as the whole sweep of human history, but also as small as each individual person. Ultimately, the issues that weigh on our minds and hearts and keep us up at night will be resolved for the human race, and our individual concerns will be resolved as well. In every congregation and Hughes is no exception. There are faithful people who are genuinely frightened about where human history seems to be headed. I, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but how many of you are, are frustrated and, 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 and fearful, Sister Uden, that, that, that our youth don't respect their elders? Reverend Roberta, are you frustrated and fearful that carjackings have become the norm? Are you frustrated and fearful that mass shootings have been deemed unavoidable? Are you frustrated and fearful that there are wars and rumors of wars and our leaders are more concerned about taking what they presume to be the correct political stance uh, than they are uh, about the egregious human suffering that is taking place all over the world. Freedom, justice, and, and compassion seem fragile in, in the face of the forces of oppression, injustice, and violence. L living in hope does not mean we have immunity to the harsh re realities of history, uh, on the contrary, it means living confidently and expectantly, trusting that the Lord of history continues to come into our lives with compassion and redemption and hope. Our challenge, my friends, is to keep uh, enough oil on hand for the lamps when the bridegroom appears and, and to roll up our sleeves and to work for the kingdom of God that is already here but not yet fully realized. Amen? Uh, also in, in every congregation in, in, including Hughes there are people who are genuinely afraid for their own personal future. Perhaps they're facing a serious illness a, a major surgery, the loss of a loved one, or even the loss of employment. But beloved, each of us needs to hear the, the, the good news that the bridegroom will come. And, and the love of God will continue to appear in our lives in surprising and unexpected ways. Please know and, and, and never doubt Jesus Christ comes when we live in hope and, and never give up. Jesus Christ comes when we express love and compassion and work for justice. Uh, Jesus Christ comes when we let people know that they are ultimately safe 
and, and the love of God. Beloved, Jesus Christ is coming back. We should anticipate his return. But in the meantime, Jesus expects us to act on his behalf. He expects us to do his bidding, to, to do his will, to show love, period, to his entire creation. And when we do, we will get a glimpse of heaven. Heaven breaks into the earth when faithful women and faithful men live in hope and give themselves to the work of the kingdom of God. God bless you, Hughes. Amen. Beloved, it's prayer time and the altar is open. But perhaps God is touching you in such a way where you just want to spend some quiet time with God as God ministers to your heart on today and that you respond back with gratitude. The altar is open. Maybe you are standing in the need of healing. You're standing in the need to be strengthened because you're feeling weak. You need just an extra measure of grace this morning. The altar is open for prayer. Won't you come? Won't you come? Or maybe you want to intercede on behalf of a loved one who's going through something this morning. And for whatever reason, they couldn't make it to church to come to the altar for themselves. But you want to stand in the gap and, and, and touch an agreement with Jesus and affirm with the Lord that it all is in God's hands. Maybe you've never accepted the love of Jesus Christ into your heart. Come, receive that love that God so freely offers to all. But maybe you are in, church, in search of a church home this morning. Hughes is by no means a perfect church, but we are a church that is marching towards perfection. And we would love for you to be a part of our church family as we grow in discipleship. We promise to help you to grow in discipleship. We're not going to be like those um, five bridesmaids who didn't share the oil. We're going to share our oil with you as we march on to a better future together. The altar is open for prayer. Won't you come? Won't you come? There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go, but I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, for I can feel Him deep within. My God is real, real in my soul. My God is real, for He has watched and made me whole. And His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real. For I can feel Him in my soul. Some folks may doubt, and some folks may scorn, and all can desert and leave, leave me alone. But as for me, I'll take God's part For God is real And 
I can feel Him in my heart. Yes, my God is real, real in my soul. My God is real, for He has watched and made me whole, and His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. I cannot tell just how you felt when Jesus took your sins away. But since that day, yes, since that hour, God has been real, for I can feel His holy power. Hey, my God is real, real in my soul. My God is real. For he has watched and made me whole in his love for me. is like pure gold. And my God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. My God is real. Real in my soul, my God is real, for He has watched and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Amen. Right. So first and foremost, before I start the tithes and offerings, just want to correct a mistake. Um, something that everybody pretty much pointed out to me. <laughs> it's bridegroom, not bridge room. That's all good. <laughs> it makes sense now after the sermon. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> anyway, um, now is tithes and offerings. Um, more than welcome to. Thank you. <laughs> Um, you're more than welcome to give via Cash App at dollar sign Hughes Memorial UMC or via PayPal at HughesMemorial.org or snail mail if that's your preferred choice uh, at Hughes Memorial UMC at 25, 2553rd Street Northeast, Washington, D.C. 20019. Also, please be reminded that we are also doing uh, legacy giving. And let me do the prayer for the tithes and offerings. If everyone can close your eyes and bow your heads. <clears throat> Please bless our offerings that we bring to you today. May these monetary gifts, no matter how big or small, be used in a matter that you see is fit for your house of worship. We thank you for your opportunity to give and for the blessings that enable us to support and live. Amen. 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 Next, we have the community life. On Sunday, November 12th at 4 p.m., a concert and dedication to Earl Hargrove at Plymouth Congressional United Church of Christ. On Tuesday, November 14th and Wednesday, November 15th, the administrative office will be closed. All scheduled activities such as community meal, etc., will continue. On Tuesday, November 14th, between noon and 1 p.m., we'll have the free community meal. 
On Tuesday, November 14th, between 7 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., we'll have the Circle of Life meeting via Zoom. On Tuesday, November 14th, deadline for Thanksgiving donations. On Thursday, November 16th, between noon and 1 p.m., the distribution of Thanksgiving baskets for those who are registered. On Friday, November 17th, at 10 a.m., there will be a homegoing celebration for Ann Cook. On Saturday, November 18th, between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m., we'll have the pop-up shop event. Also, mark your calendars. On Monday, November 20th, TBA, there'll be a homegoing celebration for Betty Mills.